this is Go Warlock here and welcome back to another Hitchhiker's Guide to Albion Online. In this video, I will be covering some concepts which I feel a lot of new and even experienced players should know about Albion. This video will be broken down into four parts. Part 1, Island Buildings. Part 2, Reset Days. Part 3, Custom Scrims. And Part 4, Vanity Skins. Starting with islands, many new players feel that they should deck out their islands with all the crafting stations possible, along with some newer, smaller guilds. I know I did this when I had my first guild. Now, putting crafting stations on your personal island is a rookie mistake. You should keep the plots for the houses, simply because houses means you can fill them with chests, and having more chests means you can store more items, and everybody knows in Albion, people just hoard items. But even if you don't plan on using it for chest storage, houses are still useful in the fact that you can outfit them with laborers if you are a gatherer or a crafter or you just kind of want to make some passive income. Now, if you are a guild and you wanted to put the crafting stations for your newer members, I highly recommend you only stick to the ones which you get the royal bonuses for. Aside from that, feel free to put more houses so you can have more chests, so you can have more items, etc. Next, we have Reset Day. This is a question that I seem to see a lot on Reddit and in the general chat. And a lot of people are asking, what is reset day? Is it where our characters get reset? Is it where the game goes down for maintenance kind of reset? What happens? Well, to put it simply for newer players, reset day is where all the territories get reset. That means your characters and everything else in the game will stay the same, except the territories located in the Outlands. Now, when they get reset, all the guards are now uh, replaced with elementals, and we have two time zones where it'll kick off. You'll have an EU reset and an NA reset, with EU reset happening first. This is also a time where guilds will group up and try to take territories for themselves. In order to take these territories, you'll need a group of at least 8 people, with an optional group being 20 plus members of course, with 12 to 15 plus members for ZVZ defense, and 5 to 8 for the boss team. Your guild will also need at least a couple million in the coffers in order to claim the territory once you kill the boss. Aside from killing the boss, the other ways to take the Terry on reset day are third partying, two zergs going at it, potentially sneaking in and killing a boss, or having what happened to us, which is slightly unfortunate, thinking that the coast is clear and calling your zerg off only to be sniped just as you finish the boss. As everyone knows, it is Albion, so anything can happen. Next up, we have Custom Scrims. If you have five people and can meet the minimum requirements in the official Albion Scrim Discord, then you can queue up for custom, safe, GVG Scrims. And I mean safe as in you won't be losing any gear. This is great for people who want to get better at PvP without fear of losing your sets. If you have 20 people, you can also do 20v20 Custom Scrims as well, but they are slightly more harder. That being said, if you're a part of a guild that has anywhere from 10 to 40 active people online at a time, you can run your in-house scrims where members in your guild can run your own rules, and then you don't have to abide by the IP caps and other, guild, or other equipment requirements in the official scrims discord. So in order to run these scrims, you're going to need to type slash CM, the name of the opposing player or someone in the opposing party, the map in which you want to issue the challenge for. And once everyone readies up, you are free to enter just like you would in an arena. And you can issue this challenge from just about anywhere as far as I know. And this is, as I mentioned before, a really great way to practice PvP tactics, 5v5 builds, etc. all in a safe place. Lastly, I want to talk about vanity items. I see SBI getting a little bit of hate for implementing skins in their game. And for those players, the simple fix is to just turn skins right off. Right here in the options menu, you have a choice. Aside from that, skins don't really do any harm in the game. And in my opinion, it adds a nice little silver sink for players looking to change up their style and allows other players to create a unique style and further kind of embody their character. One day you might be a bard. The next day you might be a princess. You can be anything you want to be. Plus, when you're not wearing any gear, it's kind of nice not to have to look at a naked character all the time. All in all, people just need to calm down about skins ruining the game as they can simply toggle them off and they don't have to buy them. So to quickly summarize this video, build houses on personal islands and guild islands. 
don't bother wasting your time building all the crafting stations as it'll just end up with a waste of resources and long-term silver sink for yourself. On reset day, territories reset, not characters. Also, if you'd like to participate, bring at least 20 people and expect fights and have some guild silver to be able to purchase the terries. Next, scrimming is a great way to get better at Albion without having to deal with cheese arena comps. To scrim, join the official scrim discord and challenge people. Or get enough people online in your guild and alliance and do in-house scrims to practice comps whenever you'd like. Lastly, skins don't break the game and can actually make an old character feel like new again. If skins aren't for you, just toggle them off. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments down below and let me know what other information you would or would have found helpful as a new player. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned.